Hi everyone, I have designed a brand new music reader for the Marble Machine 3. When one of these programming profiles passes underneath, it will force the reader to open like this, pulling this hook up here to the left, pulling the marble gate open like so, releasing a marble over here that plays on the instrument. Last week I showed you these programming wheels. When I turn the crank we can see the wheels rotate in different speeds and if we zoom in a little bit on this green thing that is the reader. The reader reads the music programming and it's a really crucial part of Marble Machine 3. There's two aspects that I really want you to understand about this reader. It's the tightness that it can control of the Marble Machine and it's the noise reduction. And I think this version is so much better than the previous machines. On the first machine, I couldn't even control the timing whatsoever, so that didn't end too good for me. And on the second machine, which I'm gonna show you more in depth, the controlling of the timing was just a mess. So I am becoming a stronger designer, I think, to take on the challenge of Marble Machine 3. Assembly begins with this sliding part, which is the adjusting part, which is the genius of this design. I have split the design in the middle to make it easier to print with perfect results, and then I put these two bodies together with some M3 flathead bolts. You can kind of see here how the sliding part is sliding back and forth. Then I'm adding a washer on the end of the adjustment screw and then I'm adding a very special lock nut. So I went to a machine store today and asked for a stronger lock nut and they showed me this one which is really cool. It's an all metallic lock nut. To the left here you have a normal lock nut and to the right is my all metallic lock nut. You can actually see it has an oval shape. It's because this nut has been deformed. They have actually squeezed the nut together to clamp onto the threads. Finding new magic hardware like this is just one of the great joys in life. So when I attached this I was actually a little bit disappointed. It wasn't that hard to screw on which means it's not that stuck to the thread but I think it will be stuck enough. So here you can see when I rotate the screw the sliding part slides back and forward. That's perfect, exactly what I want. So next I'm adding this temporary piece of fabric. I cut it from a pillowcase. Uh, I should have felt or something a little bit more robust. This is just what I had for the demo. So the fabric is there to reduce noise. So here's a sound without fabric. And here's a sound with fabric. The last part to assemble is this hook here and then I can attach it to the top and it's pivoting really really nicely. And then I can kind of demo here for you how the programming profile comes underneath and how the mechanics is working. And I can adjust the timing by screwing the adjustment bolt. And just for reference, I'm bringing in the marble gate here. So you can see that the reader is turning and opening the gate like so. Here is the CAD for the part. And if I show you the old design, you can see that once again, I managed to do things quite a bit more efficiently here. For example, this whole spring system, I managed to design away by just having the thing falling down and using gravity. So I made it very heavy on this side, as you can see, it always falls, <laughs> which means I do not have to have it spring loaded, which means I can erase a whole assembly. The adjustability, so we can move this part left and right for adjusting. Here's the method I used on the Mar Machine X. So behind these Delrim parts, I had this 0.1 millimeter shim parts that were custom laser cut. And then I had to open these screws and change the number of shims to adjust. So here's the real problem, enhance. So right here, it's actually a slot. So I made these black and white delrim parts adjustable in height. But the issue with that is that when I do change the shims behind them and I put these back onto the machine, I could never be sure of getting them in the exact same location again. So this is from the playing tight music, Mar Machine X15. And if we listen in the beginning, actually got the machine to play pretty tight. I think I can get the Mar Machine 3 to play 10 times tighter than this, easily. That's my goal anyway. I think I made a fancy video transition here. 
This was uh, back in the days when I thought video making was more important than mechanical design. Here it comes. Yeah, fancy transition, Martin. The problem was that when we shifted sideways, I also shifted height-wise, which affected the timing in ways that I couldn't know. So how do we adjust timing on this new design, you asked? Well, you turn this screw. In 120 BPM, I can read here that if I turn this bolt a full turn, I'm adjusting it 3.5 milliseconds. If I turn a quarter of a bolt turn, that's about one millisecond. So I have a super, super nice way of adjusting this. Imagine the whole machine is finished, but one channel is a little bit late. The Hyatt is a little bit late. I go take a screwdriver, I do some turns and I play again and I have adjusted the channels and nothing else have changed. So that's what I love with this design and that's the mistake I did on Marble Machine X. I think it's so much better. Let's listen to the noise of the old machine because these things were noisy. A lot of noise from the fish there as well. The new design is reducing noise in many ways. First of all, it moves less, smaller movement, less energy to make sound. And then the old design had these spring systems where the thing was spring loaded. When the programming pin let go of one of these channels, it kind of fell back and banging itself into a thin felt. So on the new design, the resting position, this position, is not crucial for the timing of the music. I can have this foam pad being really thick and cushy. There's no spring loading, so it's only falling by its own weight onto a foam pad. So when this reader returns to its original position, it will not bang into anything. It will just slowly, softly, put itself to bed quietly. The other way we have reduced noise is the interaction between the programming wheel and the readers. So let's listen again to how the readers are sounding without padding. And then we're adding the padding underneath and then it sounds like this. Let's say we have 100 channels on the Marble Machine 3. Every single bit of mechanical noise will be multiplied by 100. So it's important to hunt all the noise down that we can. And on the Marble Machine X, I didn't care. I just didn't care because I knew you could record sound in a way that isolates the sound a lot and you could remove sound in the computer and stuff like that. That's not the route I want to go with Marble Machine 3. I want it to sound good in the room. When we come to a venue and we start a sound check and I just play a song on the Marble Machine, I want kind of the staff at the venue. <laughs> I actually remember touring with a lot of my bands. I saw the staff stopped working when we were sound checking and just started listening to our sound check instead because they were so like into the, uh, our instruments and the music. And I felt almost that was a little bit of an of an honor that I can get the venue staff to stop working with the music. That's what I want Marble Machine 3 to do, you know? Everyone should drop whatever they're holding in their hands and just come and check out the Marble Machine 3, regardless if it's amplified or not, right? There's this old trope, shit in, shit out in, in music production. And that's kind of what I'm going for here. I want a nice sounding machine. Then we can do some uh, sound wizardry on top of that. Seeing my old videos, I just realized how far I've come. <laughs> I hope to show that to you by actually executing a functioning machine, but I think I'm on the right track. In today's task, I've written noise from reader. I'm going to completely give this a nice little click in the tick box. <laughs> Round one, fight!